In this video I'm going to be looking at image frames and everything they represent in InDesign which is usually frustration. Uh, image frames are uh, finicky to get along with at first but once you understand the basics of how they operate and all the little eccentricities that they come along with it becomes much easier to work around. So image frames have their own separate little boxes here, the little tool. Uh, it's right above the shape tool and it looks identical to the shape tool except there's an X through the rectangle that represents it. If I click and hold uh, it's wanting to, to show up on my other screen here so let me pull this. Um, uh, if I click and hold you can see there's a rectangle frame, an ellipse frame, and a polygon. Uh, we're going to start just with the rectangle and bring an image into it. What an image frame does, it allows me to go ahead and create a custom shape here and import an image directly into it without having to crop that image. It just stores the image according to the size of the image frame. Uh, that's extremely helpful when you're working in print because cropping photos, getting the fit in specific areas between text is constant and difficult to do if you're actually having to crop them. So this gives you a way to work around that and some flexibility that I'll show you here in just a second. Uh, right now if I have this selected, I've dragged out this text box, I, I, I'm sorry, image frame, I can see the X in the middle. If I click off and deselect it, it's not going to place an image in there if I try it now. So I have to have it selected. I should be able to see these bounding boxes around the edges. And then I'll do file and place. And then from the desktop I will locate my image, there it is, and place it in there. Now all you can see right now is one small area of it that reflects the size of the photo so it brings it in at roughly the size it would manifest on an actual page at full resolution. Uh, however, the, I probably want to see a lot more of it than that. There's a couple of ways to move it around and to adjust it and one of those is the content grabber. You can see when I hover over it a little donut appears in the middle of the image frame. Uh, that is the content grabber. If I hover directly over that donut it changes to a hand and I can click and drag to move around the image inside the frame. As long as I'm careful to grab the donut each time I can move the image around inside the frame. However, what if I would like to make the image smaller? You can see when I grab the donut and I start to move it if I hold it for a second, it will even show me the edges of the photo. So the photo is there. The whole photo is there. I can just only see a part of it. So I need to shrink down just the photo itself. The easiest way to do that is to double click on the image frame and then I'll see this orange outline appear around the bounds of my page. This is how big that image is in relation to this canvas. So if I shrink it down by using the corner bounding box and holding shift to keep it in proportion. Again if I let go of shift I can warp the photo and that is not good. So hold shift and then scale it down to keep it in proportion. Then I can use the content grabber to bring it into place. I actually made it a little too small so let's bring it back up. And then place it where I want it to be. Again according to that little content grabber. I'm going to zoom back in so I can see better and it looks like that's good. Okay another question becomes well what if I want to s change the size of the image frame itself without affecting the photo? Well if I select the image frame I could just use the corner and change the size of it and it will not affect the photo at all. The photo stays completely still, doesn't move, is unaffected. And then the third question what if I want to scale both of them down at the same time? If I want to do that I have to actually I can't I'm, I've got Mac in my head right now so <laughs> I'm trying to remember my PC key commands okay you hold control and more specifically you hold control and shift if you want to scale it down and keep it in proportion uh, which I do because I don't want to warp photos so you hold down control which is command on the Mac which is where my brain was at for a moment and that allows you to scale down both of them at the same time. You let go of it and you're back to changing just the image frame. You double click on it and then you can adjust the photo itself. So that's how image frames work. One last thing to mention with them. If I zoom in you can see that this picture looks terrible. It is extremely pixelated. It looks like a mess. It could never go to print. Uh, this is a high resolution photo. This is an 18 megapixel photo. I took it myself. I know. So why does it look bad? 
Well, the answer to that is the InDesign is trying to save some computing space, so they give you a preview of the image rather than the actual image itself. If I go to the bottom of the toolbar, I have my different view settings, and I'm going to pull it away from the edge again because it's still trying to overlap with my other monitor. Uh, look down to the one that says Presentation, and if you choose that, it's going to show me it in full resolution and I can see that it is indeed a full quality photo. There's no problem with it. So when you're working in Illustrator in the normal mode, which is where you're at by default, it's going to show you a preview of the image rather than the full resolution image itself to save computing space and keep your computer running faster. So don't panic when you see it. Just switch down to presentation mode and check the photo that way. So this is image frames. And again, it does come in other size, other shape types, such as the ellipse and the polygon. They work the same way, except for one thing with the polygon. If I select it, say I want to drag out a triangle or something. Right now, mine is set to a triangle because I've done that previously. Uh, if you want something like a hexagon or a pentagon, octagon, any of those things, uh, you can double click on the tool itself and change the number of the sides. And if I do that, it'll alter the sides here and on any future one that I create. So those are the only differences. And that's the same as with the shape tool in terms of how the polygon behaves and the number of options that you have.